Welcome to The Context. My name is David Orban, and I want to talk to you today about the breathtaking ambition of our memetic evolution. Memetics has been introduced as a concept by Richard Dawkins in his book, The Selfish Gene, written and published in 1973. A few years ago, memes in this book, in one of the last chapters, were the analogs of genes in a cultural context. Just like genes are the units of biological evolution, Richard Dawkins asked himself, could there be a unit of cultural evolution? Now, today, 40 years later and more, we have associated the word meme to funny images on the internet with uh, silly captions, or maybe more serious ones, but still this punchy, extremely compact transmission of an idea in picture form. But memes are not only the transmission of ideas via pictures. It can be anything, a song, a political message, a patent. It can be any expression uh, of our intellectual production. And as the production, storage, and transmission of our intellectual production has become ever more evolved and effective over the course of millennia, we have been able to collect and deploy ever more powerful applications of our culture, of our technology, to build societies with larger and larger impact. Now, it turns out that uh, genetics has been, uh, um, through the effort of uh, scientists, that um, started to understand how DNA and proteins and the other components of uh, our biology interact, and how genes, um, units of uh, biological expression, can be uh, activated or uh, can be disactivated. Well, we have been able to develop a technology we call genetic engineering that aims to improve how the genes work. And the applications of uh, genetic engineering have appeared in many different places, from genetically modified organisms, GMOs, that, for example, are widely used in uh, uh, the United States of America, uh, both as uh, animal feed as well as um, food sold in supermarkets for people, humans, are blogged in Europe, where GMOs are not uh, permitted to be sold for human consumption. But since, for example, almost the totality of soy that is grown in the world is genetically modified. Animal feed uh, in uh, Europe as well is uh, genetically modified. As well as other applications of uh, genetic engineering, even more ambitious to be able to overcome certain genetic defects uh, in our own bodies that uh, lead to uh, illnesses often uh, very, very grave illnesses. So, genetics and genetic engineering have been successful in tracing a scientific exploration of theories and experiments and applications through technologies that is far from being uh, fully blossomed because we have so much still to understand. 
the same has not happened with memetics and memetic engineering. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 a quiet uh, tight illustration of this scientific failure uh, is that uh, the main avenue of uh, scientific uh, progress, the publication of scientific results in academic journals, didn't happen with uh, the science of memetics. There used to be uh, a scientific journal, an academic journal uh, of, of, of papers uh, called the Journal of Memetics, but it closed. It wasn't able to, to keep publishing the uh, academic findings, the peer-reviewed papers that would support the, the publishing of, of this journal. Does that mean that uh, memetics uh, as a scientific theory is uh, wrong uh, or that uh, the concept of memes is uh, useless? It may simply be that uh, we didn't still have, at the time, 20 years ago, after the publishing of Dawkins' uh, initial concept and the attempt of creating around it uh, science and, and applications, we didn't have the support and the humus, the infrastructure, the live ecosystem of uh, participants on which to develop theories and on which to apply our experiments. And it could very well be that we now have it. We have social networks with the billions of participants. We have all kinds of applications, the highlights of which are the abuses uh, of uh, privacy uh, squandering applications that we have seen highlighted uh, uh, recently as well. Whether Facebook can or cannot reform itself in order to find a business model that is not based on the exploitation of the personal data of its users to feed advertisers that give money to Facebook in order to target these users in a, a very fine-grained manner that wasn't possible before. And finding this new business model, Facebook is going to be able to anchor itself towards a future that is more respectful of individual privacy. Or whether Facebook is going to be unable to achieve this kind of reform and some new platform is going to emerge, it is my opinion that memetics as a science and memetic engineering as the application, hopefully in positive directions, of how we can nurture the evolution of culture and the application of this evolution in our technologies, in our societies, in many different ways. Well, I hope that this is going to evolve and emerge rapidly and that we will have the ability to fully exploit what is now available to us. Because today, the rich ecosystem of social networks and participation by billions of individuals gives the opportunity to establish the validity of these theories and to test them through experiments and improve the theories through better and better experiments that wasn't possible before. This kind of hypothesis can be potentially tested. We can ask ourselves, after Cambridge Analytica, that famously took advantage of certain loopholes in the handling of Facebook data 
with or without active support by Facebook itself, still potentially to be established from a judiciary point of view through the various lawsuits that are still ongoing, but pretty likely that since that is the business model of Facebook itself, through at least an implicit support and availability of that data to be exploited, well, beyond Cambridge Analytica, are we going to have a new generation of applications that we can then analyze and we can connect to our theories of how networks of people can generate a support infrastructure that can lead to positive outcomes. From my point of view, it is undeniable that our ideas evolve and that our ideas evolve under pressure from reality with which they have to confront themselves and through this confrontation only the fittest ideas survive. These ideas are about the world but these are ideas are about ideas themselves. How to think better, how to model better theories about the world, how to evaluate theories and how to compare theories so that better theories can be applied and lead our successive experiments. The fact that we need better tools for thinking is, I think, evident given the challenges that we are facing. Challenges of a complex society, challenges of an environment that is ever more defined and designed by humans and our need to both support ourselves as well as our curiosity and ambition to go beyond and explore the world and explore beyond uh, the world to look how we can fulfill the promise of knowledge and the promise of curiosity that is driving uh, human behavior and gives embodiment to our dreams. A wonderful book that uh, supports this kind of uh, thinking is uh, Intuition Pumps by Daniel Dennett. Intuition Pumps uh, and Other Tools for Thinking uh, is um, a toolkit. Uh, a toolkit to be uh, a modern thinker that doesn't reinvent the wheel and doesn't stop at emulating blindly uh, the tools for thinking that uh, ancient philosophers uh, devised uh, thousands of years ago, but upgrades and updates itself with tools that are more modern and more effective and have proven themselves to be useful in designing and evaluating fit theories about the world. And not only uh, theories uh, that are static, but theories that are leading to fruitful conversations, dialectic and dynamic confrontations, debates, and consensus that can be applied to decisions that are political, technological, and that drive society forward. Because whether it is arms control, climate change, economic inequality, application of novel technologies like 
genetically modified organisms, advanced research in healthcare for potentially extending the human lifespan, or many, many, many other areas, we need clarity of thinking, we need inclusive understanding of the way forward, we need a clear leading light that can achieve actionable results. We cannot run in circles. We cannot um, repeat dogmatic positions that harken back to relatively primitive understanding of the world and of the human condition. Our ambitions have grown. Think about it. The life of a person 200 years ago or in, in older times was short, marrying after puberty was universal, having a lot of children because a lot of them would die, potentially losing your wife uh, at childbirth, statistically, almost certainly, uh, losing half of your children or more before the age of five and certainly mathematically before the age of reproduction. This kind of life could not be seen, cannot be seen as ideal by us today. It is so far from the way that we live our lives today that we can hardly imagine how it was. I personally wouldn't be able to understand the psychological condition of somebody who sees half of their children die. It's just unfathomable to me. That is the distance that we have come. And that is the basis from which we are now building our ambitions. And we have been able to achieve what we have achieved because of the tools for thinking that we accumulated. We have applied scientific theories to agriculture, to home building, to our economies, and to the way that we understand uh, microbes and bacteria and viruses and how we can counter their deadly effects. All of these memetically evolved components of our accumulated knowledge created the society we have today. So, for me, science and reason and improvement of how we work together in order to understand the world and face and solve and overcome our challenges is the way ahead. It is not abandoning how we look at the world. It is not throwing away the tools that we have found through millennia. It is not resorting once again to blind, ignorant dogma. It is not conflictual. It is not exclusive. It is not blind to the suffering of other people. It is enlightened. It is inclusive. It is empathetic. And very importantly, for those who look at this attitude skeptically, this attitude is not in conflict with emotions. Beauty, being in awe with the incredible complexity of the universe, feeling 
both empowered and at the same time very small when you look at the mysteries that we still have to unravel. Feeling love for other human beings, for nature, in wanting the flourishing of human beings and nature, appreciating art and poetry. These are all capabilities of the human life and the human existence that are not in contrast with being rational and being scientifically minded.